the oldest profession in the world, and, and one of the oldest discussions, too, whether prostitution should be made legal. And we have a splendid report, an interview coming up all about this. It's a little like cannabis legalization, isn't it? Um, a little Justin's obsession. Now, the law is messy, but generally I think it works. We will never satisfy everybody involved in the debate, but a little police discretion and common sense backed by a reasonable law is probably the best we can hope for. One thing is for sure. I'm not going to be told about what is right and wrong by a hooker or an activist group led by hookers. Sorry. Your trade is immoral, and while you have the right to pursue it, you have no right to give advice on ethical and legal issues. This is invariably, but not exclusively, about women renting out their vaginas for desperate men to insert their organs and pass on bodily fluid. I'm sorry to be graphic and gross, but sugarcoating does not help anybody. And that the whole thing is, is caked in disease, dirt, desperation, degradation. There are no redeeming features, but there is the qualification of it's inevitable. It's going to happen. The sexual urge is based on procreation, and all species are given the visceral biting need to continue the race. This is achieved by sex, which is why sex is well, such fun. And the true meaning of it frequently perverted and never so more than people paying for it. There are male prostitutes, of course, but the vast majority of hookers are women who become slices of meat for men. Now, I really have heard all of the arguments. There are women who decide to do this. It's their choice. They're in control of what they do. I've heard them all, and it's mainly garbage. The emotional devastation, the physical harm, the inability to form genuine relationships, the constant drug and alcohol abuse, and also the greater destruction of what physical intimacy is supposed to be. Most prostitutes are poor and broken and used by their pimps as well as by the Johns. That is why, for example, so many of them walk the street at the end of the month. They need the rent for their shabby little rooms and apartments. The, uh, the sexy, attractive ones you see on TV cop shows, incredibly rare. For the most part, well, it's rather like this. Can I ask you why you're bringing that prostitute over here? She just wants to rent a room. Yeah, I know. She's a hooker. Her kids were only parked a block away from where you picked her up. Oh, was it? Yeah, they were. We've been watching her all day. Rent a room. Yeah, for you and her. No, we've been, hell no. You're the fourth person we've caught her with. Yeah. What's your wife going to say when we call and you're giving hookers a ride to hotel rooms? I just gave her a ride or something. Then why aren't you leaving? I'll give you about 10 seconds. Okay. With me. She's got children, five-year-old kids, parked a block away from where she was working. Get the hell out of here. I, hey, I just, now. Okay. Now, he didn't look like Richard Gere either, did he, to be honest? <laughs> it will never disappear. I know that. So that the laws we have are just about right. It, it's not illegal, but if it's organized, it is. And the police are given plenty of room to use, as I said earlier, their discretion to go after the pushers and the pimps to make life difficult for men who use their services and make local neighborhoods so unpleasant for good, moral women who are walking home at night. Golly, they can even choose not to charge, well, well-known NDP types caught in the act. <clears throat> and yes, I dare to use the word moral. And why not? Would you hmm, not judge if your husband or your son used a prostitute? Would you, sir, mind if your daughter sold herself or your wife turned a trick? We know it's wrong, but we paint a coat or two of sociology or feminism or Hollywood on it to try and justify what cannot be justified. Most jobs have some greater purpose and result. They make the world a slightly better place. They do not involve the destruction of the human spirit. And there is this. It ain't pretty woman, you know, and there are no happy endings. Mind you, that's probably not the best phrase to use in this context, is it? So prostitution, as I said, is often called the world's oldest profession, but uh, I call it the world's oldest obscenity. What do we do about it? 
debate rages between those who want to normalize it in the name of safety and those who want prohibition to stop trafficking. Sun News contributor Marissa Semkew reports. I was 12 years old and when I turned my first trick, all my dreams and aspirations went down the toilet. Bridget Perrier um, is a former prostitute. She's been out of the business for 15 years, years and now works to help other girls help. free themselves from sexual abuse and exploitation. <laughs> Even as a woman, like, as a counselor, it's the same stories. It's just different characters. Same stories of sexual abuse, child sexual abuse. It's those stories that lead Bridget to believe that women never truly go into prostitution voluntarily. She says the sex trade is inherently harmful and therefore should never be legalized. But others in the business disagree. Do you like it? Yes, it's a good job. Valerie Scott is a former sex worker and plaintiff in a landmark constitutional challenge to Canada's prostitution laws. She says the current laws put her at risk. This whole case is about safety and the laws create uh, bad situations for us and they increase our security risk. The sale of sex is legal in Canada, but you cannot solicit sex, operate legally indoors, or live off the avails of prostitution. In other words, if this challenge is upheld, it would legalize what the pimps and johns of the world do. It, because clients are afraid of arrest, we have to work in out of the way, dark areas, and that leads sexual predators to take advantage, pretending to be clients. But every decision comes at a price, and in this case, it could mean more people being trafficked. I spoke to one politician who's made her career on protecting victims of sex trafficking. In Germany and Holland, they have decriminalized prostitution, and uh, Germany is now known as one big brothel. Uh, there is an increase in human trafficking uh, in countries that have done that. I don't want to see that happen here in Canada. Her fears are backed up by the numbers. This year, a study of 150 countries showed that the scale effect of legalizing prostitution leads to an expansion of the prostitution market and thus an increase in human trafficking. Prostitution coincides with human trafficking and human trafficking coincides with prostitution. And in order to come to a true understanding of it, you must look at both of them. Still, women on the front lines like Nikki Thomas, what they care about is safety. Otherwise, they'll remain in the shadows. I think that any child of mine, if they chose to enter the sex trade, they would have my full support. And most importantly, I would want them to be able to do it in a safe and comfortable atmosphere where they have complete control over their surroundings and complete control over the clients that they see. What? Marissa, very good stuff in it. I've interviewed Nikki as well. And uh, by the way, she's one of the, the active voices in the campaign against Rob Ford. I don't know if you're aware of that, but uh, <laughs> had, she wouldn't mind if her daughter became a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Do you believe she's telling the truth? No, I think that it's easy for a 40-year-old woman, actually, I'm not really sure how old she is. You probably insulted her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to come out and say that yeah. because now she's been in the industry for many years and she probably entered the industry when she was uh, much younger mm. and it's the vulnerabilities that actually lead to you know basically actually conspire to to keep people in this industry so i yeah. think it's number one it's easy for her to say that and number two i think she's she almost has to say that as a survival mechanism that's a very good point i think she does that's exactly what it is if, if she says I wouldn't want that. The next question is, why wouldn't you? And thus, she looks rather, rather shamed. I've been to Amsterdam. I've been to Hamburg. I, I'm from Europe. I know that the, those cities, to a degree, those countries, are, are, that's where every randy, unfaithful man will go if he wants to pick up a prostitute for the night. There was a time when, from, from Spain and Italy or Ireland, where men couldn't find this sort of thing in their home countries, they'd go off to Germany or Holland. 
That's what you're proud of? You've legalized a profession that, that uh, contributes to marital breakdown mm -hmm. abroad? Exploitation, misery, abuse, these are things that are intrinsic to the sex industry. And quite frankly, as um, you know, uh, Ms. Smith indicated, she doesn't want Canada turning into one big brothel, as yeah. we saw in Germany. So there is a model that, that many people that oppose this initiative, or uh, the legalization of prostitution, mm. actually want to bring to Canada. They've put it in Sweden. When they implemented it in Sweden, they actually saw their prostitution cut in half. I mean, the argument could be made that, well, you know, maybe this prostitution just went un underground. Perhaps it did, but essentially it's called the Nordic model, and it basically mm. recognizes that prostitution is something that the state should actively discourage. It decriminalizes uh, the act of prostitution and criminalizes the purchase of sex. Right. And that, that's also, I think, indicative of, of the Swedish approach to gender and power and, and, and so on. In Amsterdam, they're considering readdressing the legalization. Because what has happened there, of course, it always makes me laugh when people say, well, we, we can tax it, we'll, we'll get taxation dollars. So a prostitute will say, oh, I really want to pay 35% of my income to the government. They'll, they'll obviously go underground. And in mm -hmm. Amsterdam, there are areas beyond the red light district where if you want more perverse forms of sex and you, and you don't want, well, frankly, don't want to use condoms, there are women there who will satisfy you. So if you have a legal system, there will be an alternative illegal system too. Of course there will be. And of course, the, it runs into questions, where's the red light district going to be in Toronto? Yeah. There was some dispute about putting it on Toronto Island. And of course, the prostitutes didn't, or the sex workers didn't want that because they felt like they would have been ostracized. The people on the Toronto Island didn't want well, the, that. The, the NDP types light. on the island, Jimmy, they, they weren't <laughs> for it suddenly. Yeah. And so, you know, these individuals want it legalized they say it's going to keep them safe because suddenly uh, you know you remove the stigma and and of course you've got now police protection so they say and they they're able to hire a bodyguard but who's going to be their bodyguard their pimps going to be their well, bodyguard they are putting themselves in harm's way you don't remove the stigma you, you, you may legitimize amongst a certain group of people but the stigma is still there the practicality though in a perfect world it wouldn't be there, nor would adultery or drug use or dishonesty. Mm -hmm. We don't live in a perfect world. The law as it stands, I would say it's pretty good. The police can intervene when they want to, generally they don't. I, it works, does it not? Oh, come on, Michael, the law does not work. What would you How, do? When was the last time you've seen a police officer take down a John, stick him in jail? What the law says is Why that, would you do that a John, well, because you have to assume he's a sexual predator. He doesn't respect women right now. And so what makes you think that if we legalize it, he'd start respecting women? That's mm. number one. But you, you would put Johns in prison? Well, right now what the law states is that they could potentially face up to six months in prison or five, a $5,000 fine. But that's not what happens. Mm. What happens is they go to John's school. And actually, John School has a 2% recidivism rate, <laughs> 2%. supposedly. Well, it's so it's actually very effective. But what it says, what you do is you stick these men in John School and you teach them about what they're doing to women and how mm. they're making women feel. Would you, if you had the power, would you make all prostitution illegal? Would I make prostitution illegal? Mm. I would never want to criminalize a victim or uh, the act of prostitution because in a sense you are um, hurting the victim that way. They're I've, victims. I look at them as victims, not criminals. I, I think that's a very fair answer because to criminalize an entire group of people, there has to be more there has to be education and context and we have to work on this and I think I think gradually. Very good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you.